What's going on, guys? Trying to get jacked? What are we talking about today, Ronit? Today we're actually talking about trying to get jacked. We're not going to waste people's time today. Yeah. Right. Um, so like, this is top of mind, like really, really evidently, especially in the last few weeks is, you know, what are like at, at a certain time when you start training for a minute, like you start getting stagnant, you don't see as much progress, right? You're like, am I even making gains? Um, cause we
Um, again, you can have fun with it too. Like choose movements you want to dial in technique on. It doesn't have to be like scientific. There's nothing bro like science about this. It's just like do the movement how it's supposed to be done and then consistently do it that way and then consistently progress in that movement with that exact form, right? And if you get better control over time, more reps, more sets, more weight, um, you can add some frequency maybe over the span of a week, right? If a muscle group is stubborn per se, it's like instead of doing it once a week, maybe twice a week, three times a week, four times a week, um, maybe at the start of the workout, things like that. That's also progression, right? Add intensifiers, drop sets, rest pod sets, things like that. Um, yeah, so just know like progress doesn't have to be just weight, but just make sure you are making some consistent progress, right? I think yeah. like when you're going through training, your muscles are going to adapt to the training that you're putting in, right? Which right. is why we're increasing the stimulus. So if you're looking at your dumbbell bench press and you've been doing 90 pounds year after year after year, and it's always been 90 pounds for three sets of 10 or three yeah. sets of 12, your muscles aren't going to grow because there's no reason for them to, right? You're doing the same shit that you were able to do five years ago. So you can't really ask your muscles to grow, right? Yeah. So that's where like, I think when I when I talk to a lot of guys, they're like, yo, I don't want to like get super strong. I don't really care about getting super strong. It's like, you might not care about that, but you're already a pretty strong guy. So for you to actually increase the size, you actually do need to get a look like use stronger weights, use heavier weights for you to yeah. see the gains in size, right? Or yeah. do more reps or do like the other things that we talked about. We can't just do the same thing over and over again and expect yeah. change. And I think one of the, another biggest thing when it comes to training as well is that like, we're really good from like January to March or April. Yeah. And then like the summer comes and like, you start to see a lot less people in the gym, right? People aren't there as often. Weddings happen, summer events happen, kind of drops off. So you stop training for two or three months and then you're like, oh, yo, let me get back to it in September. You're back at it. And then December hits and you're back off, right? Like if we want to build the next five pounds of muscle, I think consistency is a big thing and you have to be showing up there minimum like two, three times a week on like the worst week possible. But most of the time, like we should be still getting four, five, six of our workouts, whatever you kind of do on a regular basis, like that yeah. should be happening every week um, because that's what's going to build that muscle. That's what's going to keep giving you that stimulus, right? So if we're kind of up and down with our training yeah. the entire time and we're relatively have been training for a decent amount of time, it's not going to cut it in terms of being able to next that, build that next five pounds of muscle. There needs to be good, consistent training for our muscles to, for our bodies to actually get the stimulus we deserve, right? And I think that's a big thing where it's like, people just kind of let life kind of handle us whatever happens with their gym yeah. um but if this is actually a priority for you then making training consistent year after year is gonna be a big thing yeah and and honestly bro like i think there's the other side of this too where like people are con too consistent right where they keep showing up to the gym every single day of the week six days a week seven days a week but then they keep changing things up because they go based again a feel right so no structure in place Right. Again, you don't have to have like a crazy scientific structure of like a workout split. Right. Have at least three to four lifts that you're consistently doing week after week in every single muscle group. At least you're progressing on them. Right. Because um, you can be really consistent, keep showing up, keep showing up. But then if you're just doing the rant, different, different things every other week because you're trying to feel the muscle more or you're trying to chase the pump, it's not going to lead to as much gains. Right. Because every time you restart a program, it's like, okay, your body has to acquire the movement. It's like, okay, I got to feel the muscle again and start the progression all over again, right? So consistency, massive, but consistently sticking to a plan, also massive, mm -hmm. right? Instead of just being consistent and showing up and like, who says this? I don't know who says this. Like, uh, I'll just give backs all the credit, but it'll, we end up exercising at that point instead of training, right? Did you say this? Maybe in an old podcast? I don't know, but... Yeah, like we just start exercising in the gym. We just keep showing up, moving our body, and like it's good. Get a juicy pump, good for your heart. And again, that's amazing. If you like spinning wheels, that's wicked. But if you're trying to make progress, build the next five pounds of muscle, um, you do want to train every single week. And what that looks like is like you almost want to be like, okay, oh, how am I gonna beat these numbers from last week? Like this is, it should be like a mission, right? Because you want to grind it out. Like our body doesn't want to put on muscle. You gotta like dig that shit out, right? It's like you gotta put it under so much stress where it's like, oh shit. I got to adapt and grow to this because this is something new to me. It's foreign, right? So you have to go to that place. And a lot of people that I know, bro, like you, they can go to this place. Like mentally, they can fucking send it, but there's no structure in place and there's no progression, right? So it's almost being utilized in like inefficient way. 
there'll still be gains, but it's not going to be as efficient as they possibly can be, right? Um, but yeah, so those are the pillars. Training execution, some sort of progressive stimulus, um, being consistent, following a structure or a plan, at least half the workouts, right? 100%. Yeah, I think Less. even like you said, the exercising part of things, like that's when you see people like you, I go into workout for my mental health or like you see yeah. the really old people at the gym that are like, yo, I just kind of do whatever feels good. It's like, that's great for them. But if you're like, you're probably in your twenties or like your early thirties or something and you actually yeah. want to build muscle, can't be doing what the fucking seven year old dude is doing. You're, you're going to need a lot more stimulus. Your body can handle it. You're going to be in a better spot. Right. So 100%. track your weights, progressive stimulus, consistency, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you guys will be in a good spot. Yeah. And, and the reason pillar. Oh, and the sorry, reason, what well, quick reason we put so much emphasis on the training component is that's pretty much the only way you can sculpt like gains, right? Like that's the only way like muscle is actually built. If you think about it, like that's literally the only place you can put tension where your muscles can be like, oh shit, I gotta grow. So that's why that has to be prioritized. It can't be like because people hear, oh my training is fine. I just like I just gotta fix the diet up, which we'll get to in a second as well. But like, mo no. Most training is not that good, okay? No. <laughs> and I'm only saying that from experience because I trained like that when I thought I was, you know, consistently showing up to the gym and, like, just sending it every single session for, like, six years, man, seven years. 2013, I started to, like, 2016, 17, I wasn't, like, seeing much gains, right? So, yes, maybe we think we're training good, but if we're not progressing and if we're not actually putting tension on the muscle consistently over time, no, training is not. That's why you probably not look small. Not good. Not, Not good. good. Bad, bad. Okay. Um, second pillar, nutrition. Yes, nutrition is important. So we'll get into a little bit of specific stuff, but like what would you say like the top three dogs for nutrition for building the next five pounds of muscle? Cool. So I think when it comes to building that next five pounds of muscle, when you've kind of maxed out your newbie gains, you're going to have to get a little bit more specific in terms of how you're eating your food, the types of foods you're eating, obviously like want good quality foods for the most part. Um, but the three big pillars, number one, carbs during your training time, right? So eating some sort of carbohydrates before you train, eating some sort of carbohydrates after you train. Um, we'll get into detail on all these things, but number two is probably going to be making sure you're getting enough protein because those are the building blocks of muscles. And then number three, making sure we're eating enough calories as a whole too, Right. So yeah. I think I'll let Ronan, I'll let you talk about carbs during training. You kind of put me yeah. on that. So yeah. talk to us about why that's really important. Yeah. So I guess without getting into, because obviously we're not uh, nutritionists or dietitian stuff, right? Um, you can check out Daria's podcast that we did a while back. She talked about carbs and then Bax also mentioned carbs a little bit in the other podcast. But understanding carbs is one of the easiest way that your body is like, yo, thanks for energy. Like carbs are pretty much energy, right? So if you're trying to get bigger, trying to get jacked, your body needs energy so it can expend that energy and then put on some muscle tissue, right? So a lot of us, we get scared of carbs and be like, oh my God, carbs are going to make me fat. Yes, if you're not going to use that energy, you might get fat because your body is going to be like, oh, I have all this energy intake, but I'm expending it. But if you're going to spend it in the gym and you're actually going to you know, train hard, then your body needs the carbohydrates. You're not going to get the same quick energy from protein or fats. You're going to get it from the carbs, right? So having like a nice, you know, 90, 120 minute prior to the workout, like, you know, a pre-workout meal. And then during the session, you can do a little bit. You don't want too much carbs during the session. Um, I would suggest anywhere from like 20 to 25 grams of like quick carbs from Carbolin. Um, anything over that, you might start getting bloated and things like that because you are still training hard, right? You're putting stress on the system. So it can't digest and get a juicy pump at the same time because the body's going to be like, yo, you're trying to get a pump or you're trying to digest shit, right? So having just a little bit um, can help replenish things. And again, if you're training for under like 60 minutes, like 45 minutes, you probably don't even need it, right? But if you have like a 90-minute bender in the gym, 22-hour bender, whatever, and you had your meal two hours prior, then some carbs can almost be like no harm, right? Like it'll also help you. Um, post-workout again, carbs. Your body is in the most prime state. A lot of people are like, yo, I got to get my protein in post-workout. Yes, that's important, but I would almost argue carbs are more important post-workout than protein, right? Because your body's in the prime state to digest the carbs, right? During the day, like, we're not really that efficient at digesting carbs. We're not doing much, but pre- and post-workout, um, during workout, our body is, like, asking for it. So if you do want to have some carb stuff, right? And again, 
when I say carbs, people think about, yo, oh, shit, okay, so post-training, I can have, like, nice ice cream or, like, pizza or something like that. That's not just carbs, right? You're getting fats and protein with it, um, and you're getting not the most clean foods, per se. So it's not going to optimize gains. But, yes, if you did have, did you did want some treats, like a cereal or, like, maybe a couple, like, you know, something you enjoy, like a rice cake and jam um, or, like, some honey on your foods, that would be, like, before, after, maybe even during your workouts, um, but yeah, just the easiest way to get energy, right? And like, I guess some science was like spikes your insulin and insulin is the most anabolic thing you can have. Um, general level, bodybuilders take insulin. So they look massive. So they get jacked, right? Like it's a steroid, but carbs technically kind of do the same thing, right? But they want to do more of it because they're trying to get even bigger. Where if I was normal people, right, that are just trying to get jacked, um, having your carbs around training can go a long way. 100%. Carbs, a little bit more science background, but carbs are essentially like glucose molecules, right? There That's what they get broken into. And the reason carbs are so uh, beneficial is because they are the most readily available or they're the fastest to be used by your body as yep. opposed to protein, which takes a lot more energy by the body to actually break down and use for energy or fat, which still takes a little bit more energy to kind of break down. So that's why we have those carbs near those times. Our body is going to use less energy. So it's going to use the most our body's very lazy, so it's going to use the easiest source, and that's why yeah. we use those carbs during our training, right? Um, next thing, protein. Protein, yeah. I'm sure you guys have heard it before over and over yeah. and over again, but it is like the building blocks of our muscles. It's going to essentially provide our body with the amino acids and the blocks it needs to build the muscles. So if we're lacking on the protein intake, which I find a lot of South Asians, a lot of brown guys kind of lack on that, whether that's like cultural foods or dietary restrictions or whatever it is, but making sure to be on top of this is going to be huge and making sure we're ensuring that we're getting the next five pounds of muscle to actually come instead of just eating just carbs or just fats, right? Like if you're looking at your, my fitness pal or your calories or your protein for the day, and it's all significantly less than a pound per body weight, or at least a pound per lean body mass, then you're at a huge disadvantage when it comes to putting on muscle, right? I think even for myself, I've noticed where when I start eating more than one gram per pound of body weight and protein, my body yeah. actually starts to look better, actually starts to feel better. Like even though I'm the same body weight, I'm looking significantly leaner over a period of time, right? So I don't think it hurts to have too much protein. Obviously, like don't have three grams per pound of body weight. That's probably overkill. Yeah. But you could probably go a little bit over one gram per pound and still see really good results throughout. So I think that's a big thing you want to focus on when it comes to your nutrition as well. Carbs around training and then making sure your protein maxing out pretty much every meal. Try to spread it out evenly, of course. Don't yeah. try to have all 200 grams of protein at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day. Ideally, if we can spread it out evenly, it's going to put us in a better spot. But if we do need to jam pack some protein at the end of the day, it's not going to be the end of the world. I'd rather you get that protein in than just skip it and not eat it at all. Yeah, I agree. No, nah, man, protein uh, is probably the most talked about macro, right? And everything, fat loss, muscle gain, in general, in like healthy diets or whatever. All diets, if you think what the common denominator is, like whether it's carnivore, keto, primal, paleo, maybe keto is a little more fats. But most diets, it's like have protein have consistent protein. So again, it's great for everything in general, right? Bone health, brain health, hair health, skin, hormones, whatever, digestive enzymes, whatever it is, like it's all great for everything. But when it comes to building muscle, it's even better, right? Because again, like we said, the body doesn't want to put on muscle, right? So if you can help that process by giving it protein so it can help repair and grow, please give yourself protein, right? Be consistent with that number. Um, but one more thing on the carbs, uh, I get this question. It's like, hey, bro, what if I train fasted and like I like training fasted and I feel good energy, all this stuff. That's great. Wicked. Uh, but again, like we're talking about here, if you want to put on the next five um, and like you really want to optimize it, it's one of those things. If you know you can have carbs, like why wouldn't you? Right. Again, it's a different scenario for training at like 6 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. Then what, I, what we would personally do is like at nighttime, have like a higher carb fat protein meal. Right. So you're satiated for the morning and in the morning, maybe just do a quick banana or like a half a scoop protein. And then intra workout will be like more necessary per se. Um, cause you don't have that much carbs cause you woke up from a level of fasted state. But it's one of those things. It's like, just cause we know like you, you, sh you can do it and it's going to help you, but just cause you don't need to per se, it's like, why wouldn't you? Right. 
Like, mm-hmm. yeah, just don't be ignorant. If you're trying to put on muscle, make progress. Carbs are going to help you. Okay. Um, protein. I'm not going to add anything to that. That makes sense. Do you have your protein pre post workout spread the other day? It's going to help you. Um, and the last point I think is consistency or calories, actually. Calories, calories. calories, enough calories, right? Yeah. Enough calories. Okay. Yo, so yes, calories. Yeah. If you're trying to build muscle and you yeah. want the next five pounds and you've been lifting for a while, um, chances of you doing it in a deficit, unless you have a lot of body fat on you, yeah. uh, relatively small. So if we're really trying to maximize this, at least maintenance, you're probably better off in a surplus of like one to two, maybe 300 calories on a daily basis, I would say. Anything yeah. more, probably not necessary. But um, I think, I don't know, I'm of the opinion, I think you're of the same opinion that like, it's okay to get a little bit fluffy if you want to put on some muscle. Um, and that's something you're gonna have to accept over the long term. Obviously, yes. don't just rush that process. But if we're talking most optimal settings for building muscle, eating more food is going to be the case. Don't try if you're 160 pounds and you want to get to 180 pounds. I think I heard it somewhere. You're not going to do it by maintaining your calories at the same spot. It doesn't yeah. physically, thermodynamically, scientifically it does not make sense. You're yeah. going to have to eat more to get to that spot. Right. So yeah. if we're trying to build the next five pounds, making sure you're eating enough food on a consistent basis, this can't be like, yo, I eat Monday to Friday, really good. And then Friday to Sunday, like I just forget to eat. I like don't eat anything, right? And your calories are super low and then it like averages out to maintenance or even in a deficit. You want to make sure you're consistently eating, consistently getting in your protein throughout the day, throughout the week, day by day. And that's what's going to put your body in the most anabolic environment to actually build that muscle, right? So if we're not eating enough, that's your big thing. It's a, I think it's a big thing we see in a lot of guys who are maybe starting off when they're a little bit smaller and trying to gain size and they go, yo, I'm eating a lot, but I'm not seeing my size or i'm not seeing yeah. my strength it's like yeah. that's where tracking your food goes a long way it's like okay now i'm understanding how much i'm really eating um so if you're kind of plateaued with that take a couple of days take a week take two weeks to actually track your food figure out how many calories you're eating and that could be something you either do consistently or maybe you pull back you start to eat more food and then once it starts to plateau again you start to track but that's something i would keep an eye on making sure you're eating enough food consistently yeah and again, this is this is to the point we stalked in training, right? If your training is not tracked, it's not objective, you're just going by pump, but you're eating a lot of food, you might not be putting on muscle and you might end up getting fluffier every single time you bulk. And then you cut, you're like, oh, I look the same. Every single time you bulk, you're like, oh, weight goes up. But then every time you cut, you look the same at the exact same body weight year after year, right? Um, and you might have muscle, that's wicked. But if you want to have a bit more muscle over time, this is where tracking some things, making sure you're making objective process or progress right? Combined with the calorie intake we're talking about. And then if you top that off with timing your carbs around training and then having consistent protein and then be fats away from training and then making better whole food choices, right? Eating clean still, right? Still moving your body, things like that. You can even minimize some fat gain, right? Um, Like we mentioned this a little bit on the Bax podcast and he was talking about on his non-training versus training day calories on his bulk in the future, right? So like you can technically take that approach too. And again, First, if you're not doing any detailed stuff, it's like tracking lifts, right? Tracking calories, maybe start with that part, right? But if you want to get to a point where like you want to minimize some of the fat gain, again, some fat gain is 100% going to come and that's part of the game, right? Just because we're putting on weight. If we knew how to put on muscle every single month without any fat, we'd be fucking double the size by now, right? So some body fat is 100% fine, but just make sure you do things to help you minimize it, right? Meal timing, um, making sure protein intake, training stimulus is actually consistent. You're still moving and then carbs around training and maybe a little bit less carbs on your non-training days, right? Um, but yeah, just one of those things, bro, like especially if you've been training for a minute. And I, I would honestly take the approach if you're like, stop progressing, start adding more calories, right? If you're consistently progressing in the gym, stay around the calorie range. And then as you start to you know, hit some plateaus, start adding a little bit more calories. You don't have to go in a crazy surplus. Like you said, like 100 to 250, 300 calories. It's more than enough. Right? What is that? Um, aiming for like, what, 0.5-ish pounds a week, maybe? Give or take. Yeah, Give you take can, two pounds a might month. want to be a, a little bit lower, a little bit higher. It's going to depend on the person, depend on yeah. like where you're at. But I think two pounds a month, two to three pounds is fine. Okay, fire. And now the last point for the nutrition will be consistency. Yes. 
doing it over and over and over again. Just like with the training, guys. Yeah. Just because it's wedding season. Just because it's summer. Just because it's winter. Just because it's your boy's birthday for the third time this year. Doesn't mean you fuck up your diet. And go for weeks where you don't track and don't eat. Because that's going to fuck you up in the long run, right? If we're trying to build the next five pounds of muscle, we actually have to get a little bit serious with how we're doing things. So things do need to be consistent. You do need to do this week after week, month after month. That doesn't mean you have to be 100% perfect, right? I think I'm a big believer in the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, you should be pretty dialed in. If we're looking at a week, maybe there's two or three meals we can have a little bit of freedom on. But one, there's ways to plan around that. And two, like... That's something that should be consistent. It can't be like, yo, I just went for a week and didn't eat anything or just ate the most shit food with zero protein. It's like, that's not going to do you any good. You probably don't feel good after that. And then it's going to take a little bit of calibrating for you to get back to that, right? So when it comes to really being serious about it, consistency is going to be huge day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month. I agree. It's one of those things. You will be consistent with the details for a long time. Like, um it might not feel like this, but like there's this book by Tim Grover, um, relentless. And he talks about the concept of like, people say like a marathon mindset, like, you know, it takes a long time, slow, like Nipsey hustle says that, um, rest in peace. But he used to tease talks in the book, right. Well, basically like marathon mindset is nice, but you want to sprint the whole marathon. That's where the juicy gains are at. Um, meaning you want to stay on track with the details week in week out day by day every single day you can't just be like oh you know like that will eventually happen like muscle just takes a long time yes we know muscle takes a long time but if on a day-to-day basis you're not getting calories you're not tracking some lifts you're not tracking body weight you're not sleeping and all these little details right we're not doing you're missing out on some gains that you can still have you know what i'm saying so just because it takes time doesn't mean you don't do everything in your power to make sure it doesn't take as much time as it possibly can Right. And so many other areas because people preach patience. Yes. But Andy actually says the same shit, aggressive patience. That's what he calls it. You've heard that podcast, right? Probably send you so many of his podcasts, but the same shit. It's like, yes, have patience, but be aggressive with that patience, meaning do everything in your power to make things happen. Still, it'll take time either way, but the other one might take like 20 times more. Right. But at least this one every day, you're doing shit that's in your control. Right. So. That's the main thing we say when we keep mentioning consistency because that's probably like, yes, it's a really important part, but we're saying just don't be consistent in general. Be consistent with the details, right? That's where I think a lot of people, like I know I, I know for a fact for a long time, I didn't do that. I was just like, oh, you know, like I'm pretty consistent. I show up to the gym every day, right? Um, but again, depends on the person goals and all that shit, but still. When we say consistency, yeah. don't take it as a general statement because people say well, consistency is key, right? It is key. But with the details, like that's why we preface everything with the details prior. Okay. Um, don't just, right. don't just take the big boxes. You got to take the small boxes. Cause that's where the details are. That's what's going to actually add up at the end of the day. Right. Anyone can say, yo, I worked out four times a week. You're fucking Karen that goes to the gym. I used to train at 34 year old mom. She can go say she trained four times a week. Her training. Mm-hmm. She wants to build muscle is not going to look like the way you want to train if you want to build muscle, right? It's going to be a lot different. So you're going to have to take a little bit of the smaller boxes to actually see the results that you want. Let's uh, let's use an analogy that people relate to um, that people probably do. I'll I'll give my example. I'm pretty bad at this. But think about relationships, right? Think about it if the big box was going on a date every week, right? And you did that every Saturday night. But during the week... No communication, nothing. Maybe just like good morning, good night. Nothing. No like sharing life, how everything is going, nothing at all. And you guys don't live together because you're far, whatever it is. But just one date night, that's it. You think that shit would work out? Hell no. Right? Imagine, like, yo, it needs to be like a daily thing. You gotta like constantly be mindful daily, like every three hours, be like, Oh, yo, I just played with my dog. Oh, yo, I just did podcast. Oh, you know, like, you got to like, no, I'm serious. It's it's part, you got to like share your life so the person feels attached, right? Right? Some people need more. Some people maybe need less. But it's those little details. That's what builds the the relationship or heal. It builds the muscle, the little details, right? Um, Hopefully people relate much more that to that, right? Than what we're talking about because we don't put, we don't prioritize this. But people prioritize that part, right? Hopefully some maybe don't, but you know, 
So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think that's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. It's like, it's just daily deposits, right? It's like, even if it's not a day you're working out on, there is yeah. still five things we fucking talked about that you need to make sure you check off the list. Exactly. And if it's like, yo, I'm not working out today, I'm not going to do these things. Yeah. Bro, that's just ignorance on your part at the end of yeah. the day, right? So there's yeah. daily deposits that you have to hit. There's small check marks that you have to hit. I'm sure when it comes to your job, you're not cutting quarters on every fucking corner, right? And if you are, you're probably not doing a very good job. Yeah. So yeah, that's where that, that's where that comes down to. It's just like taking the small boxes, daily deposits every single day. Uh, yeah. And then, because time is going to pass either way, then you're going to look back and be like, oh shit, I actually put on five pounds of muscle. You're going to look back and say, oh shit. I'm in the same spot I am when I'm listening to this podcast. And that's where yeah. you want to be, right? Because I didn't put that extra 30 minutes of effort that one day. Then yeah. every single day. Extra 30 minutes. Instead, I scrolled on TikTok and watched monkeys dance. Even though that's funny, like, but still, we wasted all this time. Okay, so muscle growth. We've talked about training, nutrition, overall consistency, life lesson for everybody, right? And then third point, recovery, right? Major key, man. I think especially right now, social media or like society, yo, just do this, 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 take cocaine, go to sleep or don't sleep and then fucking everything will be fine. And just repeat, just grind it out. Just fucking grind, right? Five hours sleep, five hours TikTok. That's it, bro. Crazy life. Nuts. Nuts. Right? But yo, like that's probably one of the biggest things I missed out for a really long time was like not recovering enough, right? Um, And again, the part of it was nutrition. I was just like eating like shit, like processed foods, frozen parate, Maggie's, ice caps all the time, right? Um, but sleep was not prioritized whatsoever. Like I would watch, I used to be a big Houston Rockets fan. So I used to watch their West Coast games, 10.30, finish at 1 a.m., right? Jesus. And then I was in accounting, so wake up at whatever, 6, 6.30, and then, you know, go to work 7, 7.30 and drive to Guelph. So six hours sleep during the week and then maybe on like Friday night, Saturday night, I'll sleep at like 2 a.m. I'll wake up at like 11 or 12, right? So I'll catch up on my sleep. But like, that's not how you, that's not how gains work. Um, Ever since I prioritized beauty sleep, you know, sleeping for the seven to eight hours. And like, people think this is fluffy, but like having like some sort of nightly ritual of like, you know, lighting the candles or like sniffing the flowers or whatever you do, um, you know, whatever people like, I don't know, bro, reading or journaling, whatever it is, right? Those things are important because in that way, the whole day, you're just like, okay, cool. Now the day's over. Now, like, the body needs rest and recovery. You I'm know? just so, imagining you, like, lighting the candle, sniffing the flowers. Yeah, I don't trust myself with candles, bro. Fucking burn the house down. <laughs> that should get rowdy. I can't even so you get, the, get the electric one. You just turn <laughs> it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably should get that one. Bath and Body has some good scented ones. You don't oh, even damn. have to light them. They just smell good. It's what? Actually one. Yeah, they just say you yeah. just smell them. So, like, you don't smell good all the time. Like, if, if they're unlit. But if you just smell the candle, it smells good. So you can just smell it before sleep. Just go to sleep. And go to sleep. But yeah, okay. So for building muscle, Sorry. recovery, major key, right? And number one pillar of recovery is sleep, right? 100%. Anything else? Sleep. Okay. So what else? What else is sleep? How much sleep? With do sleep, you need? I I think you were saying earlier seven plus quality hours. Yeah. Is a good thing. So like, don't just be in bed for seven hours scrolling on TikTok for two of them and then waking up whenever you have to wake up. No. put the phone away like yo i got my bed right here i got my drawer with my clothes i put my phone in here and i just this bitch that way i don't see my phone i'm Jeez. really super exposed right there but that's what i do every single day like it goes in there and then i get in bed and i have my kindle on my bed so maybe i'll read on my kindle for a little bit yeah. and i close it and i knock out right so you want that's one way to get quality sleep you should be wake up and you should feel like superhuman you should wake up and be like yes bro Wake up, time to go attack mode, right? If you wake yeah. up and you're like still like wiping the crust out of your eyes, you feel mad slow. Yeah. And you probably didn't get quality sleep. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah. shit, I need to go back to sleep for another hour. Probably not sleeping enough, still tired. Next point that we'll get to, probably not hydrated enough. There's a lot of things. But like when you wake up in the morning and if you don't feel like Superman or you don't feel like Superwoman, then there's probably something wrong. Yeah. That we and have some, to address. And some days in a week, it's okay. Like It's, it's okay, okay. Right? Yes. But yeah, if you constantly just feel like that, and like every day is like just a mission, you're not excited about like your life, then maybe look at sleep first. Are we getting enough sleep? Right? What are we doing before sleep? What are we doing during the day for sleep? Okay, let's go into a little bit of like how to improve sleep, right? Maybe we'll, we'll, that's probably a separate podcast. We should get a sleep expert, yeah? You know any sleep experts? 
whoever's watching, if you know any sleep experts, comment below. Let us know. We'll get them on the podcast. But yo, the thing is, if you're listening to this and you're like, yo, I sleep four hours, I sleep five hours, I feel pretty good. I was in your position from pretty much the beginning of high school yeah. to third year of university. And I was like, yo, four hours, five hours sleep. I feel pretty good. I can function. I'll be ripping coffees all the time. Mm. But it's like, then I started sleeping seven, eight hours during COVID when we had a little bit more time. And I was like, oh my God, I feel like a billion times better. And like, until you get to that point, you're not going to know. You'll be like, yo, I got work to do. I got to grind. I got to hustle. I got to do the shit I got to do. You're going to feel a little bit tired at like three, four o'clock. You're going to want to take your nap. You're going to eat more junk food. You're going to feel like shit. You're going to skip out on stuff because you're tired and you don't know that you're tired, but you're subconsciously making decisions. You're going to the drive-thru because you're like, you're like, yo, I'm kind of stressed, kind of hungry. Instead of coming home and eating the food that you already prepared, you're going straight to the drive-thru. Yeah. When I started sleeping better, I started making better choices, bro. I wasn't going out to the drive-thru. I wasn't getting fast food. Like, And even like, I can tell you now, if I don't sleep well for a couple of days, my cravings go way up. I want to eat like Lizzie's. I just want to go and have my comfort food. And that's because I didn't sleep properly, right? So it's like, mm-hmm. if you're in that mindset where you're like, yo, I'm only sleeping four or five hours, that's good enough for me. Just try one week of eight hours of sleeping. And I mm-hmm. promise you'll be like, oh my God, I've been missing out on this. Even the amount of work that you can produce is going to like skyrocket. Yeah. Like the quality of the thing, like the quality of the time you can spend with people, the quality of the work that you're producing, the quality of the communication they can have, the quality of your fucking workouts are going to feel 10 times better, right? So you're going to have, it's one of those things where I tell people, it's like, if you can pour sleep into your cup, you're going to be able to pour into so many other cups so much better. And you won't know until you actually pour that into your cup. Because if you're pouring out like a little bit and you're pouring into whatever, you're not going to know what it feels like to have like a huge big ass cup to pour out of. Right. So I think sleep is the biggest thing that uh, if you take something away from this podcast, go to bed earlier. Clip that. Clip that whole podcast. Or clip that whole clip. Sick. No, bro, I, I agree. Like, honestly, it's one of those things where you don't realize until you do it. Right. Because, like, this is one of those things that you were just saying how, like, back in university, I used to do the same thing um, of, like, oh, I feel pretty good. I'm just going to have a coffee and I'll be fine. And I like this analogy a lot. I don't know who said this, but the same with eating food. When you start eating normally, you're like, okay, cool, I feel fine. When you start eating clean, you're like, holy shit, I feel amazing. Um, it's like if your house is always dirty and something else gets dirty, you're like, oh, it's dirty. House is mad clean, and then one speck of dirt comes in, you can be like, oh, fuck, I see that dirt, right? But if it's all already dirty, like you're not going to be like, oh, yo, I see so much dirt. It's already dirty, so you don't really feel it, right? So if you don't know how to feel good, you're not going to know what you're kind of missing out on per se, right? Um, but again, if someone's trying to build muscle, like this, we've talked about bare times, body doesn't want to put on muscle, right? So it's already hard enough as, as it is. And now if it, your body is in a state where it doesn't want to be constantly, because you're not getting enough sleep, you're not eating enough, you're not doing other things, your body's like, yo, muscle is probably the last thing I want to do. I don't trust this human to put on more tissue because I don't think you can handle that tissue, right? Because so much more work for the body, it has to feed nutrients to that muscle it's in like survival mode bro it thinks you're yeah. dying because you're on four or five hours of sleep how it's not gonna want to put it in muscle it's gonna want to make sure you just stay alive right exactly so like i would I honestly I have this conversation all the time bro like people come to like i train six days a week i train five days a week i'm like yo let's train four days a week let's give those other three days and like you know sleep in a little bit or sleep a little bit earlier or like maybe meal prep a little bit go for a walk right that's gonna and Four, five, six, seven months, like, holy shit, bro. Like, I didn't know, like, I could make gains on four days a week, right? So, and that's usually because they haven't been recovering consistently. You've been training. Yes, you've been showing up. We haven't been recovering, right? A couple of pointers for, like, sleep quality itself. I think one of them, like we just mentioned, candles before bed. Um, but also a couple other ones I found is being actually tired during the day. That's why, like, you know, working out and moving enough during the day, walking, whatever it is. Your job, if you're moving enough, wicked. And we're sitting all day, go for extra walks. That's going to be a major key to actually fall asleep. If you're like not tired at all, like you're not physically exhausted yourself to a little bit at least, you're not going to feel that sleepy, right? So you have to kind of force the sleep. Um, and I guess another one would be caffeine intake. If you're having a lot of coffee later in the day, again, some people are like, I can sleep on coffee. Um, quality of sleep is probably not the greatest. Right. If you're waking up and like you're not feeling that much energy, it's probably because you're having that coffee in the middle of the day. You're not getting that quality deep sleep. Right. 
Um, but yeah, morning or like night routine, physically tired, caffeine intake. Um, any other? There's probably so many fucking sleep tips, but those are three things that 100% can just right away. I guess phone, not looking at your phone, but this also counts in the nightly routine. Like don't look at your phone. Like, you know, you put it in the drawer. So if you can mm-hmm. get away from your phone before sleep, be a game changer as well but yeah sleep and you mentioned this bare times it's like it's gonna have a domino effect on all the areas of life so everything we've talked about so far literally sleep is going to be the key that handles everything together and keeps you consistent if you feel good day by day you're going to consistently execute and take the small boxes right if you're not constantly feeling good you're fighting against the willpower every day you're like i'm ultra disciplined i listen to david goggins andy priscilla which i do too i love those guys right but you can easily like have way more willpower per se if you just have more sleep in you. Right. Um, so yeah, it's going to have, everything is just connected. So it's not just the one thing. It's like, yo, you got to connect all these things. Right. Um, but yeah, sleep, get your sleep in six to seven hours, eight hours, quality sleep, quality, major key. Uh, what would be another recovery key? Hydration. Uh, hydration. So stay thirsty, get your, get your water in. Don't stay thirsty. Don't stay thirsty. If you're thirsty is probably a problem. Uh, okay. I think, what do we say? 1.5 liters per thousand calories? Yeah, that's usually a good metric. Um, But the, bro, the easiest metric I find for people is like, yo, drink water when you're thirsty. Like, don't eat food. Really? Like, bro, like, it literally works so, like, a lot of people just don't drink water when they're thirsty. You'd be surprised. Like, they're like, I feel the right, but I just don't drink water. You're going to drink water right now, right? Well, I've been so thirsty today. We just don't drink water when we're thirsty. So, like, if you literally, if you just listen to our normal thirst levels, we'll probably drink sufficient water because our body tells us when it needs water. Uh, but, yeah, that's a good metric to follow. I usually give that 1.5 liters per thousand calories. Or whatever water bottle or thing you use to kind of drink out of, um, figure out how much of that is going to get you to your target water, whether that's three liters or four liters or two and a half liters. Um, figure out how much of those you need to drink on a daily basis and aim to drink that. Um, so instead of saying, oh, I have to drink eight glasses of water. I don't know what the fuck a glass of water is. I just know I have to drink two of these, right? Like exactly. that makes it a lot simple. So like, someone okay. has a smaller water bottle, they're like, I have to drink four of these. I'm like, okay, space it out so you can drink four of them. If you have problems going to the bathroom at nighttime, then maybe don't drink it closer to bed. Drink it a little bit further away. Um, but yeah, I think be proactive, understand when you're thirsty and keep it around, right? Make your make sure your water bottle is full. Make sure you keep it near you. Go and fill it up often throughout the day. Just make it easy for you to drink water. The reason we say that is your body is 70% water. A lot of the processes that go on in our body use H2O in the chemical reaction for that to happen. And especially in muscle building, if water is a big part of actually putting on tissue or putting on size or putting on muscle, generating those myofibrillar units, if you're taking away, big word, if you're taking away the most easiest acquirable ingredient in all of this, more than sleep, more than food, there is a 99% chance you can go grab a fucking water bottle and drink out of it. If you're taking away the easiest ingredient, bro, come on. That's a recipe for that's a recipe for failure. So like, this is the easiest factor that we can control. Just make sure you drink enough water and you're giving it a good spot. You're going to feel a lot better. So that's my water rant right there. I don't think what not not drinking enough water is should be ever be an excuse. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And and bro, people will be surprised to start drinking a consistent water. Like you'll feel better right away. 100%. Like it's amazing. It's how much how much of a difference it makes. Especially in like in a hotter environment or like summertime. Like you need water, yo. Um but yeah, I'm not gonna add anything to that. Like you use massive words. I don't think I can compete with that. So sleep, water. And then um a third third big point to get jacked. It's like, yo, don't be scared to take time off. Like, the time off could possibly give you way more ROI in your gains journey than we think it can. I think people think, oh, if no days off, no days off, get in this grind mode. But, yo, like, those days off technically require more discipline at times because you want to, you know, sometimes go to the gym because nothing to do, whatever. But taking those time off is going to give your body time to recover and adapt to the stimulus you just gave it so it can grow, Right. So if you've been training seven days, or six days a week, seven days, whatever it is, try to drop it to five or four and see how your growth kind of continues, right? And this is an easy way of looking at this. Like if you really need this, 
if you're constantly sore, if you're constantly tired, if you constantly need seven scoops of pre-workout, if you constantly need caffeine before your workouts, um, if you're constantly not progressing in certain lifts, right? If you're constantly not getting a sick pump, if you're constantly feeling like soft, even though you're training so hard, like you feel like you're doing everything. You're like, you know, doing workout, your cardio, your eating, but you're just not getting the gains. You just might be like really, really like under recovered per se, right? Or maybe you might be overtraining, whatever you want to frame it as. So adding like one, two rest days where like you're not just sitting on your ass, you're walking, still getting some sunlight, still getting your nutrition in, still sleeping it off, still drinking water. Um, I think could be a game changer. Yeah. I should have done that more. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I think Less. I think once you start training for a decent amount of time and you kind of understand once you start paying attention to these things, like your sleep, how you're feeling in the morning, how your training feels, that's when you can kind of click into like Oh, if I train like this for a certain amount of time, this is yeah. kind of how I feel when I wake up. It's kind of how I feel in the morning, right? And then that's when you can kind of make those connections. Because for the longest time, bro, I don't know what, like, I would be feeling these things, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And I remember when we were working together, I remember when I'm, like, going through this powerlifting prep. Like, yeah. I can feel when training is too much, and I can feel yeah. when, I like, my body is absolutely fried. Before, I would just push through it. Right, I'm like, yeah. oh, more caffeine. I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm being a bitch. But then it's like, oh shit. Once I actually like focused on this, it's yeah. like, damn, bro, I feel so much better. I just need to take a week yeah. off, or like, not a week off, but like, had to pull back on training a little bit. 100%. Have you heard about this thing that's going around? It's like people take a month off for extra gains. I think uh, Mike Isertel has like a YouTube video on this too. Yeah, someone made up this concept, and they're like, yo, uh, and if you take one month off, your gains are gonna be even better. Maybe. I don't I doubt don't, it. I don't think so. I think I think only thing wrong with that is like I think that would work if someone's really, really dialed in all the time. Like if they're dialed in all year and like they take a month off, I think it'll help a them. A month though? Yo, I think so. But like, yo, but RP book too, like it has like a four week maintenance period where you do low volume, low calories, and you just let your body resensitize to everything. But yo, that's that's maintenance period. They're still in the gym training. These guys are yeah. talking about like but no yo, they training, say, nothing. They also mentioned you can also not train. Like they mentioned that. It depends because some people just can't like stop going to the gym, right? But they mentioned like you can not train if you really want to. Um, But their thing is like you're just consistent for 11 out of 12 months. Most of us, life is deloading for us a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. Like vacations are coming up. This is happening. Events are happening. We're getting sick, whatever. I think that's like in a perfect scenario, like a bodybuilder. He's like dialed in all the time. And then they take a month off and just reap the benefits from it, right? In my opinion. But at least that's yeah. my theory on it. But if someone's like already like, even I would say we, we're not even in that category. Like we're not even dialed in all the time like that. So I don't think we need that month off per se, right? A week off can definitely help. Um, But like a month off probably, yeah. If you're really like dialed month, in. A month off, I'd come back. I just wouldn't know what to do. I feel so lost in the gym. Like, damn, how do I bench I press again? The only way I take a month off is I go to like Europe for thirty days. You wouldn't train still when you're there. Push ups no, or some shit. Train. Yeah, I probably still train, but that's fine. That's that's okay. Okay, let's continue. Um, all right. So this, the, <laughs> so those are the main major keys to build muscle, right? We talked about anything else in recovery, like taking time off. Bless. I think we should... yeah, we talked about rest days. We talked about and, nutrition and being um, disciplined and consistent with those things you just mentioned, like the sleep, hydration. And rest days, being disciplined with that, like being consistent with that. Again, underlying theme, just being consistent. But yeah, those are the three pillars, right? Training, nutrition, recovery. recovery. I guess we touched on mindset. We did. A, a, quite a bit, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, one thing I would, like, I guess, sum it all together, per se. Uh, yo, I, I fucking listen to Andy too much. But, like, I feel like half the words I use is from him. But, like, he gave this, you know, the cake analogy, baking the cake kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, all this shit does not sound like, it's not complicated, right? It's really simple stuff that we're talking about. But the hard part is consistently executing with the details, like we mentioned before. So, uh, Andy used the cake analogy. We're like, yo, you have all the ingredients for the cake, right? Water being one of the easiest ones. You have all the ingredients, right? And now you just got to let it bake for a really long time. You can't skip the baking process, but you can't skip the ingredients either. We all we try to skip one or the other all the time, and that's why we just stay the same constantly year by year by year, right? So just yo like fucking put the ingredients in every day, and then let it bake every damn day, and then we're gonna put on as much muscle as we want to. You know what I'm saying? 
Bless? Simple. Simple, yeah. Not complicated, but like, yeah. Simple. Simple, but hey not guys, easy. Let us know what else you want us to talk about. Cause yeah. Let us know in the comments below. Yeah. And I think I think this one is a pretty good podcast. If you like this podcast, if you're here to the end, please share it with a friend. Yeah. We obviously don't have any sponsorships yet. Probably won't get any. Um. Let's so if you guys enjoyed this, yeah. you think we want to? You think I want a sponsorship, bro? Who's gonna sponsor us? What Maybe product like, has it be? Yo, know, if it was like a beard oil or something, I think it'd be sick. No? Because yeah, I don't think they would yeah. care about what we said. Because like people with beards are pretty like savage. Just right? whatever, right? They're pretty chill, right? Beard dudes. Like if you have beard dude conversation, you can say the whack shit and they'd be like, yeah, I agree, bro. What would you know? be your dreams? What would be your dream sponsor for this show? Yeah, that's the only thing I gotta think on. I can't just blurt that out like that. Too too fast. Can't too name fast. drop anyone like that. Yeah, I don't have a I don't have a dream sponsor like that. Yeah, like I don't look at any company and be like yo. Every time I look at company, I'm like uh, no, I'll be like yo, I want to make that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, yo. I don't give a fuck who sponsors this shit. Yeah. All we care about is whoever is listening to this. You got yeah. some value from it. Please share it with someone. Uh, send it to someone that you think would be helpful. Or if you guys want to help us out personally, just drop us a comment on what you guys want us to talk about or want us to hear from. Uh, any yeah. feedback on the show will be helpful in allowing us to make sure we better educate and entertain you guys going forward. So with that, yeah. I'll let you yeah, just it just Yeah, just share it one person. If you're watching this and you know you found it helpful, just share it with another person. It'll go a long way. Um. And I guess we don't really, we should preface the podcast in the start too. The intention here is to give as much value and help people create getting jacked into a lifestyle, right? And the reason we keep preaching getting jacked into a lifestyle is because too many, you know, transformation, six months, 12 months, six, three months, whatever it is, but it has to be a long lifestyle game. So the point of this podcast is like you consume, consume the knowledge, yes, but on like a weekly or like, you know, hopefully in the future, every two times a week or whatever it is, you're constantly being ingrained with like, okay, yo, getting jacked, getting jacked, getting jacked. So it becomes a, your part of your lifestyle, even when you're outside the gym. If you're listening to this on cardio or whatever, sick too. But like outside the gym too, it's part of your lifestyle, right? Uh, that's the main intention with value. And obviously, like you want to take something away. So if you did take something away, like Kag said, please share with somebody, at least one other person. Even if it's your mom, it helps. Bless. Bless. All right, guys. Sick podcast. <laughs>